Yeah, just Chair, I want to come back in to respond to the Minister and just to my colleagues that have raised a couple of questions. So, look, first of all, I want to acknowledge the comments made by my two successors, both Minister Ryan and uh, Richard Bruton, who have both recognised the validity of the point that I'm making that biogenic methane needs to be treated uh, differently. I think the only point of disagreement between the three of us is how that actually should be reflected in the bill. And that's why I put this particular amendment forward. And I'll come back to that point in a minute. But just to answer some of the questions that have been raised uh, by colleagues. Look, at the outset of my contribution this morning, I made it clear as minister, I've always uh, made it clear and I'll do so again. Agriculture can't get a free pass when it comes uh, to climate change. So what I'm saying is that not that agriculture should not be touched, but that it needs to be accounted for separately and that there is good reason for that. And agriculture has a key role to play in terms uh, of the issue of land use and substantial progress can be made uh, in the area of agriculture. But with a deadline set in 234 weeks time, the only thing that can be done in that period that will actually have a real impact in such a short period is herd reduction. Now, the difficulty with herd reduction is that it actually undermines the type of farming that Minister Ryan himself has expressly said that he wants to support, namely family farms and pastoral grazing. So and that in itself is not good for either biodiversity or for uh, overall climate emissions. And I know that there are physical constraints there in dealing with the retrofitting of homes and in terms of rolling out electric vehicles. I'm the one that actually set uh, those plans up and those targets, and they were to be in full operation at this particular point in time, and that isn't happening. And that puts even greater pressure on what I believe is the soft option, which is cattle numbers rather than land use management. And some of the environmental zealots are trying to claim that methane from fossil fuels and methane from agriculture are the same, and they're not. They try to shut down any discussion that takes place in relation uh, to this. And there is a big difference between the two forms of methane. Methane from fossil fuels comes from carbon that has been locked away into our planet for hundreds of millions of years. Methane from agriculture comes from carbon dioxide that was in our atmosphere a few hours ago, a few days ago, a few weeks ago. And that has been converted into protein for, for humans to consume. And it's part of an overall par carbon cycle. And that, in fairness, was acknowledged by Minister Ryan and former Minister Bruton. It's been acknowledged by the Climate Change Advisory Council, by the UK government, by the EU, by New Zealand but it's not yet part of the IPCC uh, accounting. Now, having said that, I fully accept that CH4 methane in our atmosphere, regardless of source, has the exact same uh, uh, warming potential. And that's why agriculture has a key role to play in uh, climate change. But my issue is how this is actually accounted for, both in domestic legislation and in international climate rules. Internationally, this should be accounted for in terms of consumption of food, uh, which accurately reflects the impact that it has on our atmosphere, not where it's produced, which leads to perverse situations like the consumption of Deputy, meat from the Deputy, Amazon basin uh, uh, being Nocton, incentivized. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Deputy Nocton, but um, you have, I think, quite articulately and comprehensively address the issue yeah, it, and um, I do want to Chair, move yeah, on. Chair, I'm, I'm about to finish up. Go Chair, ahead. I have two substantial amendments in the whole bill. I accept that there are many more amendments, uh, but I have two substantial amendments. This is one of the two. Just let me finish my point off and I'll keep quiet then after that. So uh, turning to my amendment, the minister argues that there is sufficient recognition of biogenic methane in the legislation already. Now, I would argue that this is tokenism, it's non-binding minister, and the reality is that agriculture uh, will become the fall guy for the failure to meet the targets uh, in other areas. Now, I fully accept that setting a separate target for biogenic methane is not a trivial task. And to answer Deputy O'Rourke, 
that is why I haven't been prescriptive in my amendment here, uh, because I don't have that detail available. I don't think anyone has at the moment. But what I'm just reflecting is what has been recommended in the Climate Change Advisory Council uh, report of 2020. And I think it is imperative that it is incorporated in black and white into the legislation. And that's why I've tabled this particular amendment. OK, thank you, Deputy Nocton. Uh, and apologies for cutting across you. Uh, Minister? Yeah, if I could, and very briefly, uh, um, if I could respond to Minister or Deputy Bruton, as well as uh, Deputy Nocton there, I hadn't a chance to re respond to Deputy Bruton. And just to, uh, to maybe, maybe make the point to both, um, firstly, there will be sectoral targets for agriculture and land use, and and, uh, uh, and that will be a different target to the other sectors, and, and, and less onerous, probably. But, uh, but still, it, very much it, it too has to play its part. Uh, in that as well, just to reassure Deputy Bruton, it, we also have to account for sinks as well as sources. And, and the bill does, and the definition of, uh, of a removal of, of, of a greenhouse gas from the atmosphere sets out that clear, and that it does include the use of natural or technological solutions, nature-based solutions uh, being, being uh, centre stage. And if I can just briefly, to my key point in this, because what we have to do is increase incomes and reduce emissions, that those removal of those sinks could and should be, will be the source of potential income for farmers, foresters, land use, uh, wetland management and so on. Um, critically, that this is a turning point which for the better for agriculture, because what we want to do is redirect some of the income that currently goes to processing retailing side to pay for nature-based solutions, to pay for the environmental services by providers will, will provide. That's why a lot of farmers are rolling in behind, I think, the the uh, what we're looking looking to 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 do. That income has to go up with an origin green brand that is truly origin green in protecting nature as well as stopping emissions. It can also increase income by increasing diverse range of different, uh, well, yes, I say family farming, pasture based. It also, we can look at more secure incomes by having a diversity of income streams from farming. And last but not least, it's not just my, uh, by, uh, by uh, methane, it is also the likes of nitrous oxides, our greenhouse gases, other carbon dioxide from agriculture itself. There is potential to great, gain income from energy. Uh, created on the farm, there's potential to raise income by reducing nitrogen fertilizer, nitrogen and nitrous oxide fertilizers. So it isn't just about methane, it is about a variety of different approaches, all about increasing income, getting a new generation of, of young farmers in as emissions are cut. I, I'm, I'm afraid I can't support the amendment, but uh, I, th I think we agree on that principle that, that farming plays its part and that critically the old narrative about uh, environment versus agriculture has to stop. It, we work together. Thank you, Minister. Just, Minister, very, very, very briefly, briefly, just to say it. that my amendment specifically does not make reference to nitrous oxide because I accept the point that you're making. There is a big challenge there and about a third of the um, uh, warming effect of, of agriculture is coming from nitrous oxide and substantial progress needs to be made. But look, Minister, I'd ask you to, to look at the biogenic methane uh, issue again, look at the, the recommendations of the Climate Change Advisory Council, uh, and we'll revisit this again uh, at report stage. Okay, thank you, Deputy. Uh, Deputy, do you wish to press the amendment? No, I'm withdrawing the amendment with leave to reintroduce. Okay, thank you, Deputy.